differential this season are 500 out on the road, five games above at home at Chavez Ravine. Things are not looking good for the Los Angeles Dodgers. With the two injuries to their top two guys, you can't tell me Josh Beckett at his age during his decline that he's going through right now is going to put a team on his back and lead them into the postseason. To the American League, Baltimore Orioles just don't go away. They don't. They're a scrappy team that reminds me of the 2002 Angels and the 2003 Marlins. They're a team that has their superstar. I consider Adam Jones a superstar. They have decent pitching, but they have a lot of guys that are going to help. You know, Chris Davis has been huge. Matt Wieters, Manny Machado, J.J. Hardy. I mean, the list goes on. They had they. I don't, I don't I don't get how they're even in this race to be honest with you though. Jason Hamill had such a fantastic first half, was a big time All Star snub, has been injured for the for most of this second half. I think he made an appearance a couple weeks ago, then re aggravated his injury. We're not sure if we're gonna see him again. So Baltimore's had their share of injury problems. Their fantastic second baseman, Brian Roberts, has been out most of the year. Robert Andino has done a fantastic job filling in for him there. But this is a team that really has no quit in them. Jim Johnson's been great at the back of the pen, complemented by Pedro Strop and Darren O'Day setting him up. I mean, Buck Showalter has this team, you know, on their heels. This team has been up from day one of the season. We've been waiting for this team to fall off, and it looks like they won't. They won't. A team with no quit, nothing to lose. They're already at 82 wins, so they're going to finish over 500. I think it's great for the city of Baltimore. Camden Yard is such a beautiful ballpark. The fans, have, the attendance has been down there since Cal Ripken Jr. retired. Really. And just a fantastic year from the, these group of Orioles have put the Orioles and Baltimore right back on the map as one of the premier baseball cities and pre premier, you know, venues to play at. You know, it, ball, Camden Yards over the last couple of weeks at the home games have, have been completely sold out. They had a series with the Yankees that they split last weekend. Sold out all four games. This is the stretch run, people. Baltimore showing up. Unlike Tampa Bay, it seems like Tampa Bay fans never show up. Tampa Bay, five out of the East. Do I think Baltimore is going to catch the Yankees? I mean, both teams are playing well, but the Yankees have certainly fallen off in the last month. If you were to go back to August 16th, a month ago, they were up 10 games. It's down to one. But I think the Yankees are going to pull through. Even though Teixeira's out, probably till the remainder of the regular season, Maybe he'll play in the last few games, but certainly the Yankees should be watching out for Baltimore, but I do think the Yankees are going to hold them off, and Baltimore maybe will get one of those two wild card spots, but certainly are going to finish with a very good-looking record. In the Central, the White Sox lead the Tigers by two. Tigers never, they, they've never seemed to have gotten it going this year. They're six games under 500 on the road. Granted, they're 15 over at home. It doesn't calculate out well for a team that's trying to win games on the road. I mean, they got walked off on by the Cleveland Indians today. Yes, the 61 and 86 Cleveland Indians, who are 19 games out of first place. So, certainly a team that needs to pick it up if they want to win that central title because they, they're not grabbing the wild card spot. They're not. They got four teams ahead of them who just seem a lot more hungry and a lot more determined to be playing baseball in October. In the West, we all thought Texas ran away with this like two months ago, right? And if it was going to be anybody, it was going to be the Angels challenging them for the spot. 
But how about the amazing A's? The swinging A's. 84 and 62. Three games back. 8 and 2 in their last 10. A plus 80 run differential. 40 and 31 on the road. 44 and 31 at home. This team is taking absolutely every advantage of other teams' mistakes. This is a team that plays for each other. There's no one real superstar that stands out in the A's. Josh Reddick's a fantastic player. Yoenis Cespedes is a fantastic player. Brandon Moss is a fantastic player. But these guys aren't superstars. They're not. They're not Mike Trouts. They're not Bryce Harpers. They're not Derek Jeters. They're not Miguel Cabrera's. These are guys that come to the stadium each and every day playing for themselves and playing for a chance to win it all. This team has legitimate pitching even without Brandon McCarthy who we continue to hope has a steady recovery. This is a team with young pitching who a lot of people thought by this time of the season would fall off or get tired. Both those things haven't happened. Oakland seems to get up for every game. They're finally getting good attendance at the Coliseum. And the Rangers have been playing 500 ball the last two weeks or so. And all of a sudden, this gap is just three games. Three games. Everyone thought the Rangers had it, had their third consecutive American League West title wrapped up. But the swinging A's just don't quit. I mean, this team was off to a bad start, picked it up, got back to 500, and never looked back. They play Texas seven more times this season. Now, do I think they're going to catch Texas? No, because I believe Texas just has more firepower and are going to overpower the A's in the games that they play each other in. But I certainly think Oakland will hold on to that top wild card spot. As we go to the wild card standings in the American League, the A's two games over the second wild card leader. That's the Orioles. Orioles lead the Angels by two and a half. Tampa Bay by four and Detroit by four and a half. It's going to be awfully tough for Tampa Bay to come back and grab one of those spots. Now the Angels, on the other hand, certainly have the pitching, but this is a team very reminiscent to the Tigers, not in the sense that they're struggling on the road, but that they've never gotten it going for a, a 20 game, 30 game stretch. You know, this team has had eight, nine game winning streaks and have had those stretches where they've won 12 out of 15, but they haven't been consistent. They've been, it's been a roller coaster ride. And unless this team plays absolutely phenomenal ball over the next three weeks, I don't see them getting in. You know, I've been saying this the whole season. The Angels are going to figure it out at one point. Time's running out. Mike Trout struggling a little bit, but I'm sure a lot of Major League Baseball players would like to struggle like Mike Trout struggles. That's going to be interesting to see how it plays out in the American League. Every show we're going to be having the wild card standings. Real quick to the National League. Atlanta and St. Louis at the top. That's a little bit more tight there. The Dodgers, who lost to St. Louis today, could have been in that first place spot. But lost today. Fall to a game back. <laughs> Milwaukee only two and a half back. You know, Pittsburgh's still there. Three back, but I'm telling you, that... that it's just a mess in Pittsburgh right now. They're 2-8 and eight in their last 10. This team is not getting up for their ball games. They're not playing with 110%, and they're not playing with each other like they were at the beginning of the season. Their catalyst, Andrew McCutcheon, has completely fallen off the, place of the, the face of the planet. Six home runs and a 260 batting average since August 1st. That's not going to get it done. Milwaukee two and a half back. 
Ryan Braun, I think, has a very good chance at his second consecutive MVP. Put that on an asterisk. An, put an asterisk next to that, though. I still think he should have been suspended for those steroids. I do. If you're not going to suspend him for a positive test, and I know I've talked about this in previous shows, so I'm not going to go on a rant about it, but if you're going to test positive for steroids, don't fight about it. Serve your 50-game suspension. Other guys don't fight about it. Suck it up. Come back in 50 games and give it your all. But, obviously, things went Braun's way. I have a lot of respect for Ryan Braun. I think he's a fantastic ball player, with or without the juice. But still, I think Ryan Braun should have served that suspension. But obviously, he's clean now, we think. And he, 40 home runs, he's put the team on his back. And he's brought them to 2.5 in the National League wildcard race. Philadelphia, only 4 back. And Arizona, four and a half back. San Diego, six back. Never know. Never know. But, you know, certainly it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. I have a feeling St. Louis is going to hang on. But if it's going to be anybody that overtakes them, it's going to be Milwaukee, Philadelphia, or Arizona. These are all teams that made it to the playoffs last year. And have experience down the stretch. Not saying that guys like Adrian Gonzalez, Josh Beckett, Hanley Ramirez, Shane Victorino on the Dodgers don't. It's just that for these guys, it was a lot more recent. They can still taste the playoffs from last season. You like my deep baseball talk, listeners. You do. You really do. That's going to wrap it up for the baseball. Wow, I spent 27 minutes on that. Well, I felt it was good. When we get back on Chris's Corner, Sam Rosen is going to join us for the college football segment and then later the NFL segment. So make sure you keep listening and you don't go anywhere. You're listening to Chris's Corner on Spreaker.com. Hey, welcome back to Chris's Corner on Spreaker.com, a Sunday night edition. As I would like to introduce to you Sam Rosen of Sam Situation. Usually on Sunday nights, but Sam is here. Sam, welcome to the corner. How's it going, Chris? Great to be here. Well, we're very uh, happy to have you. Uh, Real quickly, uh, as we go over the top 25 rankings, of course, we had... US, we had a couple upsets. We had USC losing to Stanford. We had BYU losing to Utah. And we had Michigan State losing at home to Notre Dame. Top 25 goes like this in the AP. Alabama, LSU, Oregon, Florida State, Georgia, Oklahoma, South Carolina, West Virginia, Stanford, Clemson, Notre Dame, Texas, USC back at 13. Florida, Kansas State, Ohio State, TCU, Michigan, UCLA, Louisville, Michigan State, Arizona, Mississippi State, Boise State, and Nebraska. Sam, it's week four. Or anyways, it's about to be week four in the college football season. Did anybody expect USC to be at number 13? Oh, I've raised about this team coming into the season. They really look like the superpower they once were. They have offense, they have defense. Matt Fox looks like the surefire hot hyping trophy candidate to me. With Marquise Lee at receiver, it just looks too much, just too stacked to a roster to really even lose to me. And then they lose to the Stanford team. I'm not talking Stanford, but they lost Andrew Watts and Kobe Slayner. Uh, those are two very, very talented offensive players. The defense remained largely in pass, but. This SC team was just putridly bad last night, in my opinion. I-